praise and worship him this morning. Lord, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. Come on, sing it again. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. Come on, can we lift our voice and worship to the Lord? Come on, somebody lift up a sound of praise to Him this morning. I'm so thankful for you, Lord. Oh, you raise your mercy, Lord. Oh, you saved me, Lord. Oh, you changed me, Lord. Oh, you took me out of the mighty clay and set my feet on solid rock, Lord. I give you praise. Oh, I rejoice in the God of my salvation, Lord. Yes, lift your voice and praise to the Lord. We praise you. We lift up your name. song of worship to him. Just lift your voice. Come on, sing in the spirit this morning. Oh, I worship you. Lord, your blood is a rescue to the sin-stained life. Your blood is healing the hopeless and the broken. Your blood is enough. Yes, Jesus, it's enough. Yes, Lord, your blood. Your blood is a shelter in the middle of my storm. Your blood is my refuge. When I'm hurting and alone, your blood is in love. Jesus, it's enough. It's renewing. It's renewing, restoring, saving and healing, delivering captives, setting us free. It is life everlasting to all who receive it, your blood yeah. is more than enough. Oh, I believe it's more than enough. It's more than enough. Come on, sing it again. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. It's renewing, restoring, saving and healing, delivering kindness, setting us free. It is life everlasting to all who receive your blood. One more time, say it's renewing. It's renewing, restoring. Saving and healing, dear man. 
Come on, lift a hand to the Lord today. Lord, we're here to honor you. We're here to praise you. Just praise him out loud, church. Father, we praise you in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your compassion. We thank you, God, for your love. Lord. We thank you for the power of your word, God. We thank you, oh God, that you're here today to do great things in our lives in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift our hands and praise and adoration, Lord, to you for who you are and for what you have done, God, and what you're going to do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you this service this morning, God. We pray that you'll have your way. Lord, we pray for encouragement for those that are that are down. We pray, oh God, for healing, Lord, and strength, God. We thank you that this service, God, Lord, is going to be a miracle service in Jesus' name. And Lord, you're going to move in a mighty and a powerful way in the name of the Lord. Just lay your hand on your, your heart and begin to pray God's will over your own life right now and your own family. Father, we pray over our own life, God. I want to be right in the middle of, of your will for my life, God. Lord, I pray, God, that your will shall be done in my life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I give this day to you, Lord. It belongs to you in the name of the Lord. I'm not the Lord over my life. You are my Lord. You are the one who leads me, guides me, helps me in all that I do. I want you to begin to pray for your family right now. Father, I pray today, God, your hand upon my family, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over Darlene, Lord, and Tiffany, and Ryan, Lord. I pray over Madison today, God. I pray for Ella, Lord. I pray for Mandy and Jacob, God. I pray for Barbara, Lord. I pray, God, Lord, for every family member, God. Lord, that you will work in their lives, God, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord, we pray your will shall be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, God. Lord, we're here to serve you. We're here to honor you, Lord, with our lives, God. We've come to worship you today. We've come, God, to tell you that we love you and to honor you and to bless your name today. In the name of the Lord. Let's pray for our nation right now. Come on. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for our country, God. Lord, through these crises, these things that are going on, God, we pray, oh God, that people would begin to look to you, Lord. They won't look to our government, God, but we'll look to you, Lord. And God, you will move in a mighty way, Lord, in our cities and our towns and, Lord, our states, Lord, across this country, Lord, every area of this country. In Jesus' name, we thank you for a move of God, Lord, in our nation again. Lord, we repent for the sins of our land today. Lord, we sigh and cry for the sins of our land. We humble ourselves, Lord, today. We pray your will shall be done in America, God. We pray over Israel today, God, that you, Lord, Lord, would bless Israel, Lord. Your hand would be upon Israel and protect and bless Israel. Lord, in that entire area of the world, God, Lord, let men and women come to know that you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings in Jesus' name. I want you to do one more thing. If you would just join the hand of the person next to you that you're with today, just begin to pray for them and find someone that you can just pray for. How many of you know we need to pray for one another? Come on, amen. Just pray for that person on your right and your left. You may not even know them. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for one another today. Lord, I pray for my brother and my sister. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for my husband or wife, my family. Hallelujah. Come on, church, just pray out loud. In Jesus' name, I pray that you shall be encouraged today. You shall accomplish all that God has called you to do. You are a child of the King. In the name of the Lord. And I pray the favor and the blessing of God upon your life today. Maybe nobody's prayed for you the entire week, but we pray for you today. We pray for you and say, be blessed of the Lord. May God's favor be upon your life. May the will of God be done in your life. In Jesus' name. And we lose healing and the anointing of healing today. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Now let's pray for Pastor Bob as he's in Korea right now. And Rachel, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray over Pastor Bob, God, that your hand will be upon him in a mighty way. Lord, we know that you're anointing him to minister, God. You're anointing him in a powerful way. And Lord, we pray your protection and blessing and favor upon him today, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. How are you using him? You're using him around the world, God. Hallelujah. To encourage men and women to pray and to fast, to seek your face. In Jesus' name, we pray a special anointing and strength upon him today, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. And everybody said, amen. Let's give the Lord a great hand today. You may have already done this, but I'm going to ask you just to take a minute and just turn around and just introduce yourself to a couple people and greet them today. Give them a good smile. God bless you. Then you may be seated. At this time, we're going to go to our ENN announcements. 
So if you would turn your attention to the screen, God bless you. Inviting all single adults to Humor Farms Saturday, October 19th. Carpool from Evangel Christian School, Minor Lane, or meet at Huber Farms at 4.15 p.m. We will have a dinner buffet at Huber Farms Barn 1 at 4.30 p.m. Then, activities at Huber Farms. Contact becky.hoagland at ewpc.us to reserve your place by October 14th. We would like to invite all Evangel families to our annual Food from Around the World Mission Banquet. Sunday, October 20th at 5 p.m. at the Billtown Road Campus. If you'd like to decorate and prepare food for a table of eight, please contact Roger Hoagland at 413-0105 or email roger.hoagland at ewpc.us. Evangel Christian School is having our 43rd annual Fall Festival October 25th from 4 to 9 p.m. The festival will include many exciting games, activities, petting zoo, flea market, and the annual alumni versus student basketball game. Please come out and support Evangel Christian School for our fall festival. Jesse Duplantis at Evangel World Prayer Center for one night only. See is a dream. If your members are bigger than your dreams, you're in trouble because you're not building a mental map on a road to divine destiny. How do some of these men jumping on their wives because they're getting a little fat? Why don't you grow some hair? Oh. Oh. Thursday, October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Evangel World Prayer Conference Center, 6900 Billtown Road. For more information, visit worldprayercenter.org. Hallelujah Night, a night of family fun. The night starts with the illustrated sermon, Dorothy's Yellow Brick Road, a family-friendly adventure to the Wizard of Oz. Plus, parents, bring your children at 4.30 p.m. for a special pre-service meet and greet with the Wizard of Oz character. Then following the show, the grounds come alive with a petting zoo, free candy, and tons of food you can purchase. Mark your calendar now for Sunday, October 27th at 5 p.m. at the Evangel World Prayer Center and Hallelujah Night, a night of family fun. Greetings today from Seoul, Korea. Rachel and I have been here for the Church Growth International Conference, and behind me is the world's largest church where Dr. Cho is the pastor, has a million members. And I'm going to be preaching just actually very shortly at the world's largest Presbyterian church. It has 70,000 members, and they all attend in four services. So you be praying for me. Also, we're going to be at Prayer Mountain, and about 11 o'clock p.m. your time, we're going to be preaching at Prayer Mountain. So that will be the conclusion of this conference. And I'm just believing for great miracles to happen. I want to pray for you today, and I want you to put your hand right here on your chest. Father, in Jesus' name, I loose the greatest miracles of men and women's lives. Let it happen in Jesus' name this week for the glory of God. Hey, Billy Burke, we love you very much, and I know God's brought you here this today and you're going to have a powerful service as you're preaching to the greatest people in all the world right here in Louisville. Well, I look forward to seeing you to next week. Uh, we'll be uh, preaching Sunday morning and Sunday night, and I look forward to seeing you then. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord a big praise clap for our pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's great to see everyone here this morning in the house of the Lord. And just want you to know how much we love you and appreciate you and we're all a part of the family of god amen so we're all related praise the lord you're my brother and my sister and I'm, I'm excited to be here in the presence of the lord worshiping with you today but we especially would like to welcome our guest if this is your first time or possibly first time in a long time we'd simply like to acknowledge you and welcome you to this service and we have a guest or a gift that we would like to present to you if you'd raise your hand our ushers would like to serve you all right, if you keep your hand raised up real high, okay, right over there. We want to make sure we don't miss anyone. Praise the Lord. Right back over there to my left. All right. Let's give our guests a big round of applause and thank them for coming out with us this morning. We so appreciate you being here. And uh, inserted in that gift bag are several items, and one of those is a gift card. If you would please take just a moment of your time and fill that out. And when we receive our offering, if you would place that in the offering, 
We'd appreciate that very, very much. And again, thank you for coming out with us this morning. Well, this morning we're going, we have with us Brother Billy Burke. He's come to share the word of the Lord, and he's going to be ministering in this service. Also, he's going to be ministering back tonight at uh, 5 p.m. right here. And so I want to encourage you to come out and be a part of that. And I want to encourage you to, to bring your families and friends and loved ones. And I know that God is going to touch them in a powerful and mighty way. And so I want to encourage you to make sure that happens. Now, this time I'd like to welcome our missions director, uh, Dr. Roger Hoagland. He's going to come and share some wonderful things that's happening in our missions department. Let's give the Lord a big praise clap. Good morning. The ushers are going to hand you out something uh, this morning, and I want you to hang on to it, stick it in your Bible, and pray over it. It's about our upcoming mission trips. We recently returned from uh, Nepal and India uh, in September, <clears throat> August, late August and September. And uh, this is, we're returning there again. So I want you, that's one of the trips I'd like you to pray about. But let me say it was uh, the most difficult physical trip I've ever done. I'm nearing 60, and uh, one of the mountains we had to climb one day was 16,000 steps. They have a little monitor that keeps track of the steps, and, and I thought, oh, God. And then when we got to near the top, we had to climb two more hours. So uh, it was difficult, but I'm telling you, the most exciting thing is to stand in front of a group. First, we did the medical uh, clinic, and that's kind of the bait to get everybody in. And then we invite them to see this film. Well, they, they, that's new to them. They never have a film in their village because many of the villages don't have electricity. And it, the only way you can get to these villages, many of them, is by goat path. That's why you climb up these mountains. And so we start spreading the word, and you see from distant mountains these lights come down the mountains for people to see this film. Friday night at the movies. Well, it's the Jesus film. It's about an hour and a half in their language. And, and they, they just spread across the hillside, and, and they're so uh, intent and interested in what they're seeing. And then we have someone who can speak their language, stand in front of them, invite them to the altar. Now, r realize many have never heard the name of Jesus. And to see them walk to the, the front, and instead of turning this way, they have them face their Buddhist and Hindu families and say, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And it's so powerful, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, we found two churches in all this area, in all the villages, because there's, there's just a huge need for the gospel to be shared. It's an unreached people group. And uh, one of the churches involves Evangel Christian uh, Life Center, Evangel World Prayer Center, and that was uh, in the year 2000. My son and daughter-in-law and about nine others came there, and they showed this film. Two people gave their lives to the Lord. One of them, a girl, gave her land for a church, and now it's the largest church in that whole area, and that was started by Evangel. Praise the Lord. If you would open your uh, brochures, uh, the first trip is coming up in February, and that's to Cuba. Uh, that is our fourth trip there. We do evangelism. If you like to preach the gospel, like to teach, uh, we, it's a great uh, ministry trip there. It's a communist nation, of course. The prices are listed below each area. And then if you look on the back, it says important information. That tells you about immunization, passports, visas, and your payment schedule. The next trip is a youth trip. Now, every year we have over 100 involved in our mission program. Uh, it started out very small, but it's grown, and now it's consistently about 130 every year. So we thank God for that. The next is a southern mission trip. We go into uh, juvenile delinquent centers. And uh, in Tennessee and Alabama, and then when we get to Florida, we work in a homeless shelter. And uh, it's a powerful trip, and it's affordable for our youth. It will change their lives. They get a chance to share the gospel one-on-one -on -one with so many people. And uh, send your young person. Uh, anyone 13 and on, 13 up can uh, join us. Then the next is Kenya, Africa. We have built churches there. Uh, Evangel has two churches that we help to build 
uh, in Kenya. And so we're going back to Mombasa. It's a powerful trip there. We work with a great missionary. He's been here once, David Smith, and uh, he is a powerful man of God. The next is Thailand. Uh, this is our fourth trip there. Uh, Thailand, we work uh, with YWAM, and we share the gospel with uh, many of the youth that are involved in the sex trade, see their lives transformed by the power of God. It is a tremendous opportunity. Also, they've asked us to return to Thailand and teach pastors in a seminar, which we'll be doing June 24th through July 4th. Then uh, Christians United for Israel, that's in June. Um, that is uh, a time we go out into, to Washington, D.C. and support the nation of Israel. We uh, flood Capitol Hill with our uh, Christians that, that uh, present this message of support to Israel, to our congressmen, our, our uh, members of the House of Representatives and our senators. And uh, we have, we believe sincerely, we have changed the nation's focus with Israel because now it is the largest lobby group in America, 1,200,000 strong. Hallelujah. The last one is Nepal. We're returning to Nepal, but it's a different trek. It's a little more difficult. Hallelujah. Uh, but it will be a 12-day trek up into the mountains, and halfway point will be the base of, the, of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. That whole area is unreached, so we'll be sharing the gospel, and um, the tree will be to, to uh, stand right before Mount Everest. That will be great at, in the midpoint. But anyway, that's October 2nd through 19th. Raise your hand and say, I love missions. And God, keep your hand up. God, if it's your will that I go on a mission trip, lay it on my heart, and I will obey. Amen. Thank you. All right, you have just committed yourself. <laughs> all right, but you know, in all sincerity, I, I have been able to participate on some of those mission trips, and they are life-changing. It is that no other can. And I will encourage you that if you feel led to go, don't let the financial aspect of that impede you, because God is able to supply and meet all your needs. God's able to make a way for you. If you want to go and you feel like God has called you to go, then he'll make sure you have the necessary finances to do that. So I want to encourage you to take, take advantage of some of these trips and let God use you for his glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just a couple other quick announcements, but I need to share them with you. So I appreciate your patience with us this morning. As many of you know that this is Pastor Bob and Margaret's 25th anniversary as senior pastors here at Evangel World Prayer Center. And in your bulletins, you should have an envelope in there. And that is a special offering that we are taking, not today, unless you just choose to do so. But take that and pray about what you would do, because on the celebration service that we're having, we're going to present them this gift from the entirety of the church. And so I want to encourage you just to take you know, some time and just consider, you know, all that they have done for this ministry and for our families and, and pray about how we could be a blessing to them. So I want to encourage you to do so. And also, we are having a wonderful opportunity for our entire congregation to be a great blessing to those who are in need in our city through the Lord's Kitchen and partnering with the uh, University of Louisville, the men's soccer team, whose head coach is one, our member here, Ken Lola, and uh, we, he has uh, just felt in his heart to get involved in doing this, but what they are offering us for every canned good, they are going to give us a voucher for a special game that they are having, and it happens to be on Halloween evening, and it's going to be a wonderful time. They're going to set it aside for families, so it's an alternative from taking your kids out on the street. Uh, into the neighborhoods and they're going to have prizes and games and it's going to be a wonderful family and I, we want our church family to get behind and support this so out in the lobby here and at Miners Lane you'll see our, our, our bins out there and if you would bring in your canned goods one can gets you one voucher so if you bring in ten cans you can get ten vouchers and so they want to fill that stadium 
You know, wouldn't that be a great testimony that people support the Lord's Kitchen and come out and do such a wonderful work? Amen. So I want to, let's give the Lord a big praise clap. And so we need our congregation to rally behind this. So just begin to collect those canned goods, bring them in. And we're believing God for 10,000 cans of food. Everybody say 10,000. I believe God's going to help us. And people are getting behind this even outside our church. But we don't want to be outdone by anybody outside. We want to do the over-the-top amount here and inside for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. One other announcement is Sister Pam, won't you raise your hand real high? Okay. She is inviting all of the ladies for a meet and greet immediately following this service in room 109. And they have some refreshments back there. And I want to encourage all of you ladies to just take the opportunity to come back there for a few moments and uh, get some fellowship and just begin to maybe mix and mingle as women enjoy doing. Husbands, they're, they'll just give you, you know, that time to go over there. Don't worry about them. And this is just going to be a wonderful time. So I know it would be a great blessing to you. Amen. Well, I thank you for your patience and your long-suffering for all of these announcements. Amen. You've done excellent. And we're going to go ahead and receive our Sunday tithes and offerings. Let's give the Lord a big praise clap for that. Amen. And we want to thank you for your faithfulness and giving and sowing into this ministry. And as you have heard, this ministry is not just reaching within the walls. It's reaching outside the four walls. We're reaching throughout this city, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, establishing churches. We're doing this throughout the nation and the nations around the world. And it requires a massive amount of resources. And God has met us and he's continuing to meet us. And the vehicle that he uses is you and me. And so we are conduits by which God allows resources to flow into our lives and to flow out of our lives. And when you and I will understand and comprehend that God desires to bless his people, that God wants you and I to prosper, to be blessed so that we can be a blessing. You know, Ecclesiastes tells us in 11 1 to cast our bread out upon the water and it says after many days it shall return it says give a portion of seven even unto eight for you know not what evil comes upon the earth and what that's really referring to a person who gives god's always going to meet them god's always going to take care of them even though there's difficult adverse conditions upon the earth god says i'm going to take care of you i'm going to meet you I'm going to cause you to do good when nobody else is doing good. That is the awesomeness of our God. So I want to encourage you to be very faithful and position yourself in a place where God can bless you for His glory and His honor. Amen? Amen. We, can we all stand? All right. They're going to, if you would, direct your attentions to the screen. And we're going to declare our faith confession here today. And then we're going to pray. I'm going to ask this choir, they've been standing up here doing such a great job, to lead us out in the faith confession. All right, let's say it with them. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I come into your house not empty-handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. And the devourers was rebuked for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessings. By faith I have a better job, promotions, raises, bonuses, and benefits. Business opportunities, sales, and commission increases. Inheritances, rebates, settlements, and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalties, and scholarships. Gifts, surprises, and newfound monies. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have, I have an anointing, anointing for blessings, equipping me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God is upon me and everything I put my hand to will prosper. 
I am a cheerful giver, sowing into the ground that's bringing souls into the kingdom of God. And my God is supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, let's say that last part. Doesn't that just sound wonderful and encouraging? And my God shall supply all of my needs. Amen. I want to pray for you. And then we're going to give you an opportunity to release your tithes and offerings. And then we're going to receive our march. And we have tickets up here for Hallelujah Night. I want to encourage you to take those with you and just give them out wherever you go. And I'm going to tell you, when you give that to somebody that's unsaved and they come, they'll get saved for the glory of God. Now let's, let's bless this offering. Father, in Jesus' name, I just want to thank you that you are a great God. You are a mighty, awesome, and glorious God. A God who is faithful and true to his word. And Lord, this morning we take you at your word. And Lord, as we bring our tithes and our offerings, as we plant our seed, Lord, I want to thank you that that's going to trigger, Lord, Lord, a response from heaven. Lord, that the windows of heaven would be opened up unto us. Blessings being poured out we cannot contain. And the devourer rebuked for our sake. Lord, I'm asking you to prosper your people. Lord, those that have honored you and have been faithful to you, God, I declare they're marked in the name of the Lord. And they're going to flourish like the palm tree. Lord, when nobody else is doing any good, Lord, your people that honor you are going to excel in Jesus' mighty name. So, Lord, I thank you for your blessings that make us rich and add no sorrow to it. For your glory and your honor in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. You may be seated. In just a few moments, we'll receive our march. going to pause just for a moment. I promise we'll return you to the service here in just a matter of minutes. But I want to remind you that you can call for prayer. The number is on your screen, 888-613-6080. If you're unable to call, you can send it in by email to prayer at worldprayercenter.org. We're believing God to meet you and to meet the need of your life. We serve a God who answers prayer. And he said in his word that we should call on him. We should ask that we would receive, seek that we would find, knock, and the door would be open. So there's many reminders. Make your requests known unto God is another verse in the scripture. So we're asking you to join with us in agreement according to Matthew 18, 19. And these partners will pray with you and believe God for your need to be met. So I encourage you to place that call. And let's believe God to do something great and mighty in your life today. Now, we're going to go back into the service, and we're going to believe God for something great. I want to encourage you to open your heart, get your Bible out so you can follow along with the preaching of the Word. And when prayer is, is lifted up, you join in that prayer. And again, if you need to call, give us a call, 888-613-6080. Eight zero. We're going to go back into the service now as it continues.
just give the Lord a big praise clap. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Oh, praise God. You know, there truly is a wonderful presence of the Lord here today. This morning, we are honored to have with us a real friend of our church. has been ministering here for quite some time, and we always love having him. God always uses him in a great way, and I believe he's got a right now on time word for us. And let's give the Lord a big praise clap this morning as Brother Billy Burke comes to minister to us. Come on, let's let, the, let him know that we appreciate him being here. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. It's not often you get a greeting from Seoul, Korea. I think the pastor's just making sure we're all behaving. What do you think? Let's put our hands up in the air and pray for Pastor Bob right now over there. He asked us to pray for him. I believe you already have, but let's do it again. Father, we thank you for the leader of this church, Pastor Bob Rogers, his daughter Rachel. We thank you that you've sent them over there by the grace of God to give audience, to pour out, to be a drink offering, a meal offering, a wave offering. And God, we pray that as Pastor Bob gives out of his deposit, of his treasure, that he'll be filled many times over and he'll bring back the riches of his trip to this great congregation. Come on, say right now, say Holy Ghost. Fall on Pastor Bob. Protect him. Strengthen him. Give him a revelation he didn't have before he went there. Bring it home to us. We'll take it to the world. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a big shout this morning. If you have your Bible, quickly, the book of John chapter 20. Gospel of John chapter 20. Hi, Pastor Bob. So good to be with you. So privileged to be at Evangel World Prayer Center. It's been a while since we've been here. You guys have been having some great, great meetings. And uh, we've been having some great meetings where we are. And I want to share this thought with you this morning. I'm going to leave you with this power thought this morning. Hoping that you'll come back in our evening service. We're going to spend a lot of time around the altar believing for the miraculous. Uh, we just came from Pittsburgh. A lady came in with a double mastectomy, had no breasts. Uh, the cancer had not been taken out. It still went into her soft tissue. She still had two big remaining tumors. And she came in in the month of September. Excuse me, in the month of August. She came into that healing service. God touched, the power touched her. Came back the next month, 30 days later. 30 days later. 30 days later. No tumors, no cancers, two new breasts. Somebody better do a little bit more than that. And then when she sat down, another lady stood up with her granddaughter and she said, we were in that same service and as you touched my daughter, she's 15, autism, born autistic and she said the power touched her and she noticed that her seizures had gone she noticed that she was talking clear she noticed that a lot of the symptoms disappeared so they took her to a specialist in Pittsburgh and that specialist did blood work scan work everything they do to test for autism and when he came out he said I don't know what you did but whoever did what they did did a really good job there's no autism in this girl at all Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, say all things are possible. And that means my thing. My thing is possible. Just as the Bible characters, so it is for me. In time, faith and patience, I can grab a hold of that promise. Come on, give God a big shout today. So what I'm saying is, we're seeing just an avalanche of the creative miracles. A woman in Pittsburgh had no, uh, no gallbladder. It had been removed. She came into the meeting. God gave her a new gallbladder. Angie Cheek got a new stomach, a new appendix, a new lung. You know, we're, we're just seeing on and on and on this creative move that's in the world today. God will not be outdone by wonder drugs, the big time vitamins, come on, the occult. Come on, God will not be outdone. He is still the king of the supernatural. Oh my 
my God, he's the king of the supernatural. And we got to make sure that as Christians, we don't just come in and sing about the supernatural, but live in the natural. God wants to visit his people and he wants us to live longer and stronger, bigger and brighter and better. Come on, press down, shaking together and running over. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a truckload coming to your house today. Come on. Mm. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeth the stone had taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runs and cometh to Simon Peter and to other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord uh, from the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and they came first to the sepulcher. He stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and he went into the sepulcher and he saw, everyone say he saw. Come on say Peter saw the linen clothes lie there and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher. And he what? I can't hear you. What did he do? Come on, say, with his own eyes. And he what? Believed. Let me say this, and this is the power of thought that I want to give to you that's that has rocked my world for the past, well, this past year, almost this past year. And that is this. God did not roll the stone away to let Jesus out. He rolled the stone away to let the disciples in. If he could walk through the walls of a house after he was resurrected, he could also walk right out of that tomb without touching the stone. But God didn't want that. God wanted that stone rolled away because he wanted the disciples to see and Mary to see the evidence of the resurrection. He wanted them to go in. It wasn't like Jesus, here's Almighty God, needs a stone rolled away. Well, that would be a pretty weak, come on somebody, Jesus. That would be a natural person. So they rolled the stone away so that they were able to see with their eyes this linen cloth and see with their eyes this head wrap and then it says then they believed Amen. sometimes it takes more evidence to get you to believe than what preachers want you to think sometimes we're a little slower than what maybe we think we are sometimes the person sitting next to you needs more convincing than they thought we live in a dark negative pessimistic world where they were pounded every day on the internet, the TV, magazines, and newspapers, one out of every four, three out of every five, 25% of all Afro-American men. And once you get this stage of cancer, here's your chances, here's your percentages. And that's all that we are immersed in hopelessness every day of our life. And then we go to church and we hear about you can be healed, you can be delivered, you can be set free. I just told you two stories. I, I don't know, I don't know what side of the town you came from, but I don't know anybody that can grow you brand new breasts without doing some amazing surgery. I don't know who can give you a new gallbladder, a new stomach, a new appendix. I don't know who can open the blind eye. I have never met anybody but my Jesus of Nazareth. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody got to help a little bit. We got to start getting the wow back into our, our excitement here. Amen. We got to quit getting used to all this stuff that we talk about. Talk about this one thing, but owning it's another. Amen. Come on, say, they didn't roll the stone away, roll the stone away. To, let to let Jesus out. They rolled the stone away, the stone away. to let the disciples in. Amen. Why? Because they needed that extra evidence. When they saw the clothes that he was, they thought, oh my God. Then they believed. 
What God is doing in this hour is that he's doing something so amazing, but if we're not careful, we'll miss it. And that is this. He is sending. I mean, it's one thing to come to church and hear the word preached. I don't think anybody leaves Evangel World Press Center after this service and goes down here to a restaurant, wherever you go, over here to, uh, I'm not quite sure of all the restaurants, but Alexander's or Chang's or wherever you go. Or if you go home, I don't think you go home and argue over the fact whether Bartimaeus was really blind. I, I don't think you go home and say, I don't think Lazarus was dead. I don't think we, I don't think we go home and say, ah, that man they lowered through the roof. I don't know about that story. What the preacher preaches to you, you already believe. That's not our problem. Our problem isn't what God did to the Bible characters. Our problem is, can God do that for me? I'm glad somebody's excited this morning. That's where the issue is. We, like I said, we have no trouble. Like, you can get a Pentecostal guy in here and he can say, and, uh, and uh, there's lower the man through the roof, and, uh, and oh, he couldn't walk, and, uh. well, you've already believed it before he says one more, and, uh. You don't, I mean, you're enjoying the way he's delivering it, but already in here, you've heard that preached a thousand times. It's already in your foul cabinet. They lowered him. He got forgiven. He got healed. And he walked out of there. He picked up his bed in the pool and walked out of there. He went and washed his eyes in the Siloam and he walked out of there. You don't doubt that a bit, but yet you still struggle with carpal tunnel or legal blindness. You still struggle with type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, stage 2 cancer. You know, you still have issues with your spine, with your pain. You still get out and you still hurt every morning when your feet hit the floor. You have to take a pill to go to sleep. You get up in the middle of the night, you don't even get a full night's rest. So your sleep patterns are broken up. Your healing hormones aren't released. You don't get a chance to heal through the night as your body is supposed to heal in your sleep because there's interruption there. But you believe Lazarus was raised from the dead, so praise God. See, the issue isn't, did these happen to these guys? The issue is, can that same guy that did that in the scriptures come alive in your life, in this age of your life, in this season? You know, if you're in your 20s, that means it's in your 20 season. If you're in your 30s, it means you're... If you're in your 80s, it means you're... And how many know God can do it in any, in any season? We've seen him heal so many people in their 80s and in their 90s and in their 100s. Miracles. Documented miracles. But here's the issue. The issue is sometimes God says you need a little bit more than just what you're hearing we know faith comes from hearing, but we also see in this story, it came from seeing. Amen. Is it better to not have to see? Well, of course, but I'll take it if I have to see it. Amen. And God don't want you to get discouraged thinking, well, you know, there's something going on that's not coming your way. So what has he been doing over the past years that maybe we're missing? He's sending people across your path with the evidence that's in their testimony. And God will continue to prophetically send people into your life that's been healed of the very thing you need to be healed of. They'll come into your life and they're going to say, you know what, and it may be them carrying that healing or it may be them, hey, I want to hear about what happened to my grandson. I can't tell you how many times I've been in an airport, at, on, on an airplane, 35,000 feet. I, I mean, I was sitting next to a lady whose daughter was dying of cancer on her way to a clinic. The mother's in the middle reading daily uh, a guidepost. And I looked over and I saw her reading the guidepost. And I said, boy, you like the guidepost. And she said, yeah, I'm just trying to get some, yeah, trying to get some hope from a daughter over here. I said, oh, what's wrong with your daughter? She said, well, she's got stage four, you know, da 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 You know, and da 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 And I'm just trying to get some, you know. I said, I was healed of brain cancer. I was healed of brain cancer as a boy, and I was healed of, you know, a full lymph cancer, lymph node cancer, 10 years ago, all through my system. 
I was healed twice in my life. Power of God hit me twice. At nine, I was with Catherine Kuhlman in Pittsburgh. Brain cancer, lung cancer, gone in 30 seconds. Ten years ago, gone after taking communion. Now, wait a minute. This mother, this mother, she looked at me. She said, my God. I mean, the anointing fell at 35,000 feet. She got hope all of a sudden. Why? Because somebody came across and showed her some grave clothes. Somebody showed her some evidence. It's not just in the Bible. There are people walking around that have been touched by the power of God. Come on. So when I told her that, she just started shaking. Well, here comes the stewardess. She said, ma'am, are you all right? She said, oh, this, this man, tell her. I said, no, I'm not telling the stewardess. That was for you. She grabbed her daughter and started shaking her daughter. Her daughter's over by the window. She said, did you hear this man's story? He got healed. Oh, and she leaned back. She said, would you touch my daughter? Would you touch my daughter? Why? Why does God bring people across your path that have the arthritis, you know, that has the scoliosis, that has the, you know, the uh, spinal stenosis, that has, you know, uh, HIV, hepatitis C. Why does God bring people across your... Why did that come to your ears? Why did that fall in front of your eyes? Because God wants to what? Transfer a blessing over to you. If you can catch a germ, you can catch the anointing. If you can catch a demon, you can catch a healing. Come on, somebody. Oh! You get dangerous when you get a spoonful of hope, I'll tell you what. You wreck the devil's plans with a spoonful of hope. And sometimes it just says, God, God says, I got to let you, I got to just let you see some more evidence. You're going to church, you're praying, you're getting prayed for, you're in a revival meeting, but you still got scoliosis. You still are smell like Ben Gay three days a week. Come on, somebody. You still can't eat this food, you can't eat that food, and you know, you're living like half of an animal. You got you know, you to eat rabbit food the rest of your life. You know, you're, you're living in the curse of your forefathers. They had bad veins, you have bad veins. They had bad heart, you got bad heart. You're living in the curse of your forefathers. And God is saying, my God, I, I, I just don't need you to get to heaven. I need you to have a story and cast a shadow while you're there. And, come on, somebody help me tonight. Today, this morning. So God says, man, I'm going to, he, as he's healing people, as just as my little story, that's, that is so, to me, so normal to tell it. I don't have to work anything up. I don't have to make anything up. I, I lived, I went through it. So it's natural to me to say, yeah, I was the, it, it's just, it just comes out. And when that came out, it jumped on that mother. Money can jump on you. Anointing can jump on you. Healing can jump on you. Somebody help me this morning. You get around the right people. You get around the right people, and I'm telling you what, I mean, then you get around the Apostle Paul, you get around Bob Rogers, you'll have more vision than you could ever imagine. I mean, he's running more churches than most guys try to just run one. Come on. Most guys try to have two services on Sunday. This guy's running 17 services on Sunday. You get around him, he'll break you out of a little box. Come on, somebody. If you let it happen, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. This lady on the plane did. I touched that girl, I went on and the power started hitting that girl over on that side over there. I said, you're going to live and not die. You're going to go through some stuff, you'll have some tests, you'll have some this, but you will live. Your life has just been extended because of this plane flight. Because God set this up between you and I. He didn't set this up for you to die, he set this up for you to live. Come on, somebody give God praise today. Somebody praise him all over this place. God's about to do miracles in this house. But sometimes you've got to get reinvigorated because you know what? Your faith goes up and down. Your desire. You come into a season where you desire, I'm going to get me a healing. I'm going to get me a healing. And then you're all fired up. You have a revival. And I'm going, well, it didn't happen. Well, then your desire subsides. 
It may be a month or two or a year or two. If it's not a terminal illness, you just go about learning how to live with it. How to live with braces, how to live with insulin, how to live with, you know, all the stuff that we learn to live with. You know, this healing we had last, cup, last weekend up in Michigan. Get a little of this. A lady was deaf for over 50 years. Her husband brought her. He said, we heard about the miracles in your ministry. He said, but, you know, we could never get into one of your meetings. When we heard you were near us, we had to get here. My wife's been deaf for over 50 years. And he said, you know, you know I, watch this now. Listen to the story. Oh, my God. He said, I would just, can you help her? I said, well, I know God can help her. He's a healer. He loves to heal. God's always thinking about healing, restoration. That's on his mind. He is not a condemner. He's a healer. He's a repairer. I said, okay. I said, well, let's come on over here, ma'am. And she stood in front of me, and she's just uh, pitiful looking. Because that's what disease does to you. It steals your dignity. It makes you less than who you really are. So I put my fingers in her ears and you know, broke that power. Oh, my God, she started to hear. She was so excited. She, she started snapping her own fingers up on her head. You know, and then she said, I can hear the singing. I can hear the singing. I hear singing. Oh, my God, I can hear singing. So all that's good. All that's good. But here's what happened the next morning. He calls my office in Florida, the husband. He said, I need prayer. Well, my people in Florida said, well, tell me about why you need prayer. Well, uh, blah, 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 I was at the meeting. My wife, blah, 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 couldn't hear, blah, blah, blah. Pastor Billy prayed for blah, blah, blah. She could heal, and I'm so excited about that, blah, blah, blah. But he said, I'm having trouble living with a woman that can hear. <laughs> I'm serious. This is a true story. And my, and my secretary said, she said, Are you, I'm sure you're happy, right? I'm thrilled for her, but I feel bad for me. <laughs> he said, I got to watch what I say. Yeah, I, I got, you know, she answers me. Oh, you, and my secretary, she means so she's now intelligent. You're married to a smart woman. He said, no, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm glad she's hearing, but it has, re it has rearranged my whole pattern. If cancer can mess up a family, healing can get it right. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody help me today. And that's why God brings people across your path. Every week we get thousands of phone calls in Florida. Ask Pastor Billy if he's ever seen the hepatitis C, F, uh, an HIV, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, mongoloid babies. Has he ever seen? I mean, the list goes on. Alzheimer's. I said, yeah, tell, him, I'll tell, him, tell him the people about the lady in Indiana. She's late stage Alzheimer, lost her mind. Had notes all over the house. In the bathroom, in the bedroom, in the kitchen, the husband was going crazy himself. One service, one touch from the master. One touch. And the power hit her. He came that Sunday night service. He said, my God. He said, we've ripped down all the notes around the house. He said, but I need you to help me. Why? She's remembering way too much. <laughs> so you got to watch God when it goes beyond what you can ask or think. You may get too much memory. You know, you may get too much power. You may get too much hearing and way too much insight. Come on, can you say amen? amen. This stuff is real. But God, see, God knows that we struggle because we're immersed in this. It's nothing personal with you. Somebody says, I watch Fox all day long. I like Fox, but they don't reach out with miracles. It's a conservative news agency that I really, really like that counters the liberal. But they're not allowed to cross that line. You know, we, we got to make sure we're reaching out to the hem where the power can really help us. And what God is doing, he's sending people, I promise you, across your path. They may be invisible to you. And the worst thing the devil has done, he's taken somebody's victory to make you feel down. He's reversed this. He's made people feel bad because you, somebody comes along with the same thing you have. You have rods in your back. They have rods in their back. But their rods, she, they got healed and the rods disappeared. So they, God brings them across you over here at the Walmart. Haven't seen them for a long time. Hey, Ethel, how you doing? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know about how long I've had these rods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, same, same thing as I have. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was at a meeting. 
oh, that World Prayer Center, bring it over there. And they had some, I mean, the, I mean, I felt this. And I just, well, you know, what's the, I mean, well, you know, well, the pain left. I mean, the pain left. Well, you're hearing this because you got rods and you still have pain. Really? You hear you going, really? What are you supposed to say? I'm jealous. <laughs> you're feeling jealous, but you're thinking, really, isn't that nice? Praise God. And then they go on. Oh, my God, but oh, my God. You know, so I went back to the doctor, you know, the doctor. He took pictures. The rods are gone. And then here you are, really? <laughs> See, the reason that God brings that person across, it's the same thing as seeing the cloth. He's got to take it a step further than a Bible story. He wants to bring it into 2013, into a culture that's being immersed in 50 shades of gray. But this is 50 shades of bright light from the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody help me here. So I tell my secretary, when they call in, tell the people whatever they're asking, yes. I've seen that. And yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. And not yet, but we will. Not yet, but we will. Hey, not yet, but you're the first one. Somebody's got to be the first one in their family. Somebody's got to be the first one in their church. Somebody's got to be the first one in Louisville, Kentucky. Come on, say, that's going to be me. Come on. And what does God want that to do? He wants you to hear that story. And that is your tomb sepulcher experience. And you're supposed to walk away thinking, that's not a Bible story. That's her. And that's the same thing that I'm fighting or that my daughter's fighting or that my husband's fighting. And man, I was allowed to hear it. I was allowed to see it. What's the purpose of all that? So that you hear that he is still working today in that realm. And that God wants that blessing to jump off of them over onto you. And what? Recalibrate your faith. Get you excited once again. Excitement ebbs and flows. We all know that. Come on, say, ebb and a flow. Excitement ebb and flows. You come into seasons where, man, you just know and you know and you know. And then you come into seasons, I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. Then you have these help me Jesus seasons. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so when you're in a help me Jesus season, that's when God sends these people to get you back up into hope so, I hope so, I hope so. And then launch you up into I know that I know. It's my set season of favor. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Because if you have so many sermons that a pastor preaches in one year and the guest speakers in one year, what happens is you forget about the healing you need and you move on into the prophecy. And you shift over into your marriage and you shift over into the money. And all of a sudden that one thing you heard about getting your spine, getting out of that wheelchair, you know, it kind of ebbs and flows and it kind of goes away if you don't keep focused on it. So how does God keep you focused if you can't hear 52 sermons? If, you have, if you're too busy to get in and do the things you need to do. He prophetically sends people across your path. In the grocery store, at the restaurant, Amen. at the bus stop, on a plane, in a taxi cab. Amen. I can't tell you the number of times I've been in different places. And I don't go around just sharing my story or sharing about miracles. I just, you know, unless God said, I can't tell you the number of times that I've just been called upon in an obscure, incognito place, in an incognito way, you know, just say, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's what he has? Yeah, I had something like that. Really? Well, you look pretty healthy. Well, I met Jesus. You what? <laughs> then they, they get real defensive. I'm Muslim, I'm Catholic, I'm Baptist. Oh, you're in trouble then if you're Baptist. Come on, say amen. <laughs> I can't help, but Muslims we can help, and Catholics, but Baptists, they're a tough core. Come on. <laughs> and, and, and the people, they get shocked by the fact that right there in front of them is somebody who had, who had, H-A-D, past tense, what they had, and their eyes are on it. Their ears are on it. And what's happening slowly is there's a transfer going on. It's a transfer of hope coming over on top of them. I'm telling you what's coming your way. There is a transfer of hope coming to your house. Yeah. Every house in this room this morning. You better give God a thunder of praise. Come on. You better give him a thunder of praise in this place. 
Because it, it grieves God that we get excited for a season, you know, about getting our arthritis healed, our carpal tunnel, our arthritis of our hands, our, you know, our lumps and bumps and bumps and fibroid tumors. It's just, it, you know, we get all excited and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen in the time frame we think and we just get, you know, well, I'm just trusting him. It's not the fact you're trusting him, it's how you say it. How's it going? I'm, you know, I'm trusting him. Wow. I mean, there's some carbonation missing in that soda. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? You know, hanging in there with the Lord. Oh, wow, I, I got gotcha. you. How's that back on? Well, you know, we, sometimes we just got to roll it over on him. Roll it over on him, trust in him. We've done everything we can do, and now we're just, you know, trust in him. It's the look of your face. It's the flow of your inner man. You're saying the right words, but you're lacking something. You've lost the fire. You've lost the unction. You've lost the ability to believe that what God said he's going to do, that he's going to do. It didn't happen in your time frame, but you're still breathing. You still got brain waves. You still got a heartbeat. It's still, you're still here. God's setting you up for the biggest miraculous invasion of your whole life. He's going to get, he's going to use what happens to you to reach the unreachable people of your family. He's coming soon. He's got to do an overnight harvest and he's going to use you and do everything through you. You're the doorway to so many people. Come on, somebody help me. That's why you can't quit. Grandpa can't quit because grandpa's got grandchildren. Grandma can't quit because she's got grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Dad can't quit because he's got a wife and children. She can't quit because it's so selfish to quit. It's selfish to quit. You owe it. You owe it to your legacy and your heritage that you just didn't get a God that takes you to heaven. But if you stay true, if you persevere, it will pay off. If you hang in there, come on, you'll hold on. God will do it. He'll heal your inside. He'll heal your outside. He'll get your mind all straightened out. He'll repair the breach. He'll reconnect you to the right people. He'll restore your future and give you back your treasure. Come on, somebody. My God. It's your job and my job to do this, to recognize these prophetic moments, these Kairos moments. Amen. This isn't Kronos, this is Kairos, a God moment. Amen. Why, am I, why am I at Starbucks not just getting coffee and I run into so-and-so? You've got to learn to recognize that was set up for you to hear what you heard. Right. You've got to quit blowing stuff off. Hey, honey, guess who I ran into today? Uh, who'd you run into today? You know, Jack. Oh, yeah, how's he doing since that surgery? Honey, he went to a prayer meeting and yeah, I'm, I'm happy for Jack. I'm happy for Jack. I'm happy for Jack. I'm happy for Jack. And you don't even take out of it what you're supposed to take out of it. Jack's taken care of. God brought Jack to help you. Come on. I mean, he, he brought battery cables. Come on, somebody, the AAA truck and everything to get you all charged back up. To say, my God, after I heard what happened to Jack and I knew how bad Jack was, I'm going to go get me my rich. I'm going to get me my healing. I'm going to go get me my restoration. My God, I'm even a better Christian than him. Come on, somebody help me. But if you miss those moments and you just begin to think you're here and stuff, oh, that's neat. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for her. Boy, she, get, she came through that cancer surgery and the doctor said, you know what? You're not going to need chemotherapy. Something like that. Because you don't need everything they say you need. Do you hear me? Most of those people are wired to cut and sell. This last bout of cancer I had 10 years ago. Four, stage four. Told me it was over. Well, I'm thinking, man, Catherine Coleman's dead. Can't go back to her. And I, my grandmother grabbed my arm and she said, you were and you are. And I got a hold of that word and te kept that in my heart. You were and you are. And then the Holy Ghost said, seven days you take communion. Seven days, seven nights you take communion. 
with sterling, with the best stuff you have in your house. You drink as much of that juice as you want, and you eat as much bread as it takes. Eat the bread till you're full. Come on, you're not in some church that gives you a little, come on, a little crust of bread and a little cup of juice. You're at home. Drink the whole bottle. Eat a whole loaf of bread if you have to. Come on, tell your neighbor, help yourself. Come on. <laughs> Seven days. And I was scheduled to go back to the oncologist, you know, because they wanted to begin treatments for my preparation to meet Jesus. Just 10 years ago. I was shocked that I had it. I, I never thought I'd ever get cancer again. So every night my wife and I would come in and we'd get that pitcher and, and the cups and we'd eat. And, I mean, she did the regular thing. But I, I mean, I'd eat and drink and eat and drink and call out to him. Went to uh, Epcot Center, Disney World, and told me to stand by the fountain in Epcot and sing to him. And I stood by the Epcot fountain right there in the center and started singing to, the, to my healer. Come on, say, he's my healer too. Say it. Say it again. He's my healer too. Say it one more time. He's my healer. Came home on the seventh night, took that last thing of communion. The Holy Ghost said, you don't go to your appointment. They said, you call the oncologist tomorrow and you tell him you want an appointment. So I called him. I said, I need to get an appointment. He says, no, we have you scheduled. I said, no, no, no. I said, I need an appointment now. But we, no, 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 no. We need it now. I need it now. I, I want to get confirmed sooner than later. Went in, they took all these tests, did the CAT scan, did this, did blah, blah, blah. Come back, had the stethoscope over us. This is the oncologist. He says, you know, uh, what happened? I said, what do you mean what happened? He said, just tell me, what, have you done anything? You know, did you go to, you know, Germany or did you, what did you do? I said, I drank juice and ate bread. He said, what do you mean you drank juice? I said, I, drank, I took communion. Did you ever hear of communion? Well, I mean, yeah, at the church, the stuff the priest does. Well, I'm the priest. I am the priest. He said, oh, you're a priest. No, I said, I'm, I'm one of the priests. He said, well, how many priests do you have? I said, there's millions. He said, what church is that? The church of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody better give God a shout here today. Come on, say there's a boatload of hope coming your way. Tell somebody. He said there is not a trace of cancer in your whole body. Come on. So do I believe that's a miracle meal? Yes. Do I believe that's the meal that heals? Yes. But you got to follow through with what you heard. Our weakness in church is execution. We hear well. We take great notes. I've never seen the devil afraid of notes. Don't you come after me. You know, don't. I mean, come on. He's not afraid of your notes. He's afraid of you applying what you're hearing. I'm promising you this. And here's the part. You need to feel bad for 30 seconds, okay? Look at your neighbor and say, only 30 seconds, though. Tell him, huh?